Hey everyone, welcome to the first live stream that I've ever had on Instagram. So tonight, I've been challenged by Adam Dorman, better known as Evening Dram, to come up with the 2021 Bourbon and Rye starting lineup. And since I'm Big League Bourbon, what a better challenge to participate in. So, here we go everyone. So tonight, I'm going to be using... The same lineup card that everyone else has been using. So as you see here, we have nine different positions to fill tonight. And I'll be going over all the different positions with you. So tonight, for the opener or our leadoff hitter of the night, I'm going to go with my standard leadoff hitter, which is a Ezra Brooks 99 from Lux Road Distilleries. It's a 99 proof Lux Rose based out of Bardstown. And this is a non-age stated bourbon. It is one of my go-tos, and it's probably because of the mash bill on this bad boy. It's 78% corn, 10% rye, and 12% malted barley. One of the big things about this one, it definitely reminds me a lot of my mother's chocolate cake that I used to have when I was a kid. And it gets those chocolate notes from the heavy malted barley being over 8%, which gives bourbons that chocolate flavor. So cheers to our opener or leadoff hitter of the night. This one's good every time. So our number two, which is called always a hit for me, always a hit is a knob Creek store pick. If you're in the bourbon game and you've been around long enough, you're definitely going to find some knob Creek store picks. For me, I'm always on the search for any of them that are over 12 years old, more so the 14 and a half years to the 15 year. This is a new one I just picked up. That's a 14 and a half year. You can't go wrong with these. If you like the bean profile, they're fantastic. If you've been around the bourbon game like most of us have, you know that the 15 year old totes are supposed to be Jim Beam. Now, I was lucky enough to score this store pick for $39.99. Compare that to some of these 15-year-olds that are running around that range anywhere from $140 to $200. I'm telling you, these Knob Creek store picks, right up there in every blind challenge, they're hitters. And for $39 to $49.99, I'm taking this one all day as my all was a hit and a pick over any of those other tote 15 year old bourbons that are out there right now. Third is our hitter. This could also be my blended as well, but as for a hitter, I'm going with smoke wagon, uncut, unfiltered. For the price point, you're talking $79.99. Man, it's hard to beat a smoke wagon, uncut, unfiltered. All their other expressions are great. If you get into their rare and limiteds, amazing. Some of the five-year, eight-year, 13-year, definitely great picks. But when you grab one of these uncut, unfiltered, that is a hitter. That's a three-hole hitter all day long in my lineup. And you can't beat it. Coming out of Las Vegas, Nevada, just gives it that little bit of different profile when it's aged for those last couple of months to some of these for around a year. Before Aaron gets to blending them, uncut, unfiltered, all day, my number three hitter. For our fourth hitter, this is our big hitter, number four hole hitter. I've got several choices here of mine, but I'm going to go with one that shocked me a little bit. I would normally think I'd be picking out my George T. Stag. I went close enough. My number four hitter right now this year is Stag Jr., Batch 15. This guy's a hitter all day, and he can definitely be my cleanup hitter. Um, after I opened him up and he was around, got some air in him for about two weeks, it really opened up. The heat went down all of a sudden. I love this guy. I mean, I can't go wrong at – MSRP, which I scored this guy for, for me, that was $49.95. <sighs> Number four hitter all day long. 
This rate's up there with the big boys. 131 proof on this guy, 131.1, my bad. But definitely number four hitter, big hitter in the lineup. And I'm taking him based on value at 49.95. I don't think the other ones are coming up and stealing the show. So that's my number four hitter. When we get to our number five hitter, it's called Just Awesome. So for my Just Awesome, I went with an Elijah Craig barrel proof. Now, if you've had different expressions of these, they all change, whether it's the A, the Bs, the Cs. Right here, there's a C920. For me, this is an absolute big time player. I know the A21 was a little disappointing for some people, but when you look at value for a 12 year bourbon that's coming out at barrel proof, and they range anywhere from $59.99 to $74.99 for my area, you're not finding many 12 year olds at barrel proof that are consistently fantastic. I would take that as a number five hitter in a lineup. Any day of the week, definitely, definitely in my starting lineup. And I want that protecting my big hitter, my stag junior. So going to number six, this is a weeder. Now, my weeder choice, probably going to shock some people. It shocked me the other day when I first picked this up. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is. This guy bumped Weller Antique 107 out of the running for me. Once again, I was surprised. But I'm going to pull out this guy, the Horse Soldier. And this is a barrel strength Horse Soldier. And this distillery comes out of Columbus, Ohio. These guys come in at 122 proof. And this is supposed to be an eight year weeder. This is a fantastic buy. This ran me $71.99, a little more than your MSRP antique. I, I see them MSRP for $49.95, but I see these on the shelf every day at the stores I go to. So for $71.99, I can grab it off the shelf. The complexity of the flavor on an eight-year weeder, man, to me, Number six hitter, but this guy could be hitting higher up in the lineup. This stuff is fantastic. If you haven't tried it, I suggest you go out and get yourself a horse soldier barrel strength reserve because they're fantastic. I do know they did have a 111 version for a while, proof wise. This is a 122. I have not had the 111, so I can't speak for that. But this 122, pick it up, guys. As a weeder, this is a big time hitter. And will shock you. Coming in next, we got the number seven. And this is a blended. My guy Tim Evans is in here, so he probably already knows what I'm going to pick. But when it comes to a blend, there's one company that I think hits it out of the park better than everyone else. And, and it is Untitled. This is number 17. These are made by 1-8 Distillery, which is part of District Made out of Washington, D.C. Now, these are sourced. It is said they are 2B MGP. If you were lucky enough to get a batch, 14, I believe, those are the 13 and 14 year old MGP straight juice. They're unbelievable. As far as it goes with these being a blend, this guy is a blend of a 10 year old MGP weeder that is finished in rum, then finished in Calvados, and then finally finished in cognac. That's then blended with a 14-year MGP high rye that's finished in a Amontillado sherry butt. You mix those together, you are getting some amazing flavor on this guy. And I'm telling you, we're talking cherry. We're talking Manhattans. Like if you like a Manhattan and you like something that's complex, rich has that deep cherry flavor, this batch 17 will blow you away. This comes in MSRP for me around 
probably high, calling it a seven hitter, but I will buy this at $79.99 all day over most bourbons or ryes that hit the shelves anywhere. Untitleds are amazing. Close second for this category, shockingly not enough to me, but Untitled Batch 11. If you can't get a 17, they're hard to find because they flew off the shelves with their age statement. Batch 11, another just amazing fig, deep raisin. Oh, man. It's it's a hitter in its own right. So it was a toss-up for me on both of these. But the 17 wins out with that cherry flavor and the ages. It's fantastic. So coming in the eight hole, always an important guy in the lineup. This is called double barrel. So for my double barrel, I'm switching it up a bit. I'm going to pull out a rye here for my double barrel. And my double barrel is going to be the Nulu Toasted rye. It's got a nice toasted barrel, number two char finish on a four and a half year, 116.2 proof rye. This stuff is fantastic. This one's actually a store pick from Total Wine. You can't go wrong here. They're definitely doing it right at Prohibition Craft out in Louisville, Kentucky. Nulu's busted onto the scene and they keep on dropping hitter after hitter. Now, in a lot of lineups, this guy might score a lot higher for you, but I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Hopefully, their distribution opens up some more so you don't have to get these out of groups or get them out of store picks or order online. But if you get a chance to get some Nulu and the Toasted Barrel, mm, the Toasted Barrel bourbon is also a fantastic bottle. I don't have one of those. I've been lucky enough to have it. I do have the rye. And I absolutely enjoy it. So if you get that chance, pick up a new Lou and it's going to do you right. That's my number eight for a double barrel. Now coming up as a ninth hitter, that is craft or crafty as it was in the challenge. For my craft distillery, I have Chattanooga whiskey and I'm pulling out the port cask. This is fantastic. A lot of the Chattanooga is fantastic from their 111. That is their regular bourbon at cast strength. That thing is great. They use all different products that are malted in that. It's a hitter. This port cast finish surprised me. Comes in MSRP at $46.99. It's a buy all day in my book. I've had their other experimental finishes. I have the Anejo tequila finished one. I have the fig Amaro finished one. I've had the coffee finished. Um, the one thing I haven't got from Chattanooga is I haven't been lucky enough to score one of their store pick barrel strength selections. I've seen some of those coming in in the 120 to 126 range. I definitely like to get my hands on one of those. Um, because I have not had anything from Chattanooga that's bad. You know, the Chattanooga rye, I have that on the shelf too. That's that's another hitter, man. I, I'm impressed with everything that's coming out of Chattanooga right now. They are an up-and-coming distillery. Their spirits are just getting older with age. They're expanding their distribution. So for me, Chattanooga takes it in the craft selection over a lot of other brands. Now, on that same note, I'm going to say another of my favorites, I would consider a craft brand, but in talking to their sales staff and their head distiller in the last week, they've told me, in their opinion, they have left the craft phase. So they consider themselves a mid-level or mid-market company now, and that's Driftless Glen out of Baraboo, Wisconsin. If you're lucky enough to get any Driftless Glen products, at your stores that come in at cast strength. And right now that range is anywhere from 118 to 126 between their bourbons and rise. You're scoring an absolute hitter that is five years old at cast strength coming from Wisconsin. So you're getting that absolute cold. You're getting super hot summers. So that juice is getting pulled in and out of the barrel all the time. You can't go wrong. That 
Driftless Glen Rye right now is probably one of my favorite pours that's out there right now. So if you get a chance, that would be my honorable mention or my pinch hitter off the bench that can replace any of these guys from my opener all the way down to my crafty. I'd be proud to put a Driftless Glen Rye in my glass. So quick recap for you. My list here covers... My starting lineup. So a quick look at my starting lineup for everybody. Here we go. That is my rendition of the Evening Dram 2021 Bourbon and Rye Batting Lineup Challenge. I hope some other channels get in on this. I hope to see the Mash and Drum who had me send him a lineup card gets in on this. I'd like to see Marty from Whiskey Nose get in on this challenge. Um, I'll be editing this video, putting it up over on my YouTube as well. Anybody else wants to get in on the evening dram challenge that was put together by Adam Dorman, please do so. Make sure you take and hit the follow button. If you don't know already, go over to YouTube, follow me at Big League Bourbon, hit that subscribe button. I'm normally on on Thursday nights at 9.15 with former minor league and former major league players. Tonight, we are lucky enough to have Brandon Lawson on, a current pitcher in the Houston Astros organization. He's pitching for the AA Corpus Christi Hooks right now. He's also a bourbon enthusiast. You can follow him here on Instagram as well at Major League Bourbon. So lots of baseball out there. Lots of us in baseball love our bourbons. Hey, come on out. Check us out. Follow our content. Hit that follow button. Hit the subscribe button. Everybody else, have a good night. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for watching everybody that's live in the chat here. Tim Evans, Burt Ben, Adam Dorman. Um, I see you guys. I'm not good at doing the Instagram while doing the lives. This is my first one. So check all you guys later. See you on another channel and look for me to be live again here on Instagram, not just YouTube. Thanks all. Bye.